a huge conference, and uh, uh, it's really very impressive. Uh, I want to thank my old friend, uh, Ambassador Constantinescu, for his overly kind comments. Uh, and, and thank you very much <coughs> for that. Uh, I, <coughs> my first trip as a special envoy on energy for Hillary Clinton, my, literally my first trip was to Romania in 2009, and that's when I first met uh, Ambassador Constantinescu, and we met many times since then. He is an old friend, Grigorescu, uh, and I have only known him for a week, but now this is the third time we've met in a week. Uh, we met in Washington last Tuesday, uh, here in uh, Bucharest uh, yesterday, uh, and, uh, <coughs> and again today. And uh, uh, so, and I, uh, your vision with respect to energy uh, for Romania, I think, is, as they say in the United States, right on. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll talk a little, talk a little more, talk a little more about that. Uh, <coughs> Romania uh, is, I think, a microcosm uh, of the whole of Europe uh, with respect to. I think Romania has a special place given its history uh, and abundance, uh, abundance of resources uh, that uh, Romania is very, uh, is very fortunate to have. Um, look, at, look, at what, look at what is here. Gas, coal, uh, oil, hydro, uh, biomass. Uh, all, of this is, all of this is critically important and gives Romania uh, the chance uh, to be uh, really self-sufficient. And as I understand it, Romania now, at least for the time being, uh, is uh, independent, uh, particularly uh, <coughs> with respect to gas. But I don't think that Romania should act as an energy island. Uh, Romania needs to continue to work regionally uh, and needs to continue to work with like-minded countries uh, in Central and Eastern Europe uh, and in the Baltic states. Um, I've uh, argued now for years, and I can be a little less diplomatic now that I'm out of the government, that the Central and Eastern European countries and Baltic states really ought to form uh, an energy bloc within, uh, within the European Union politically so that uh, what's necessary for uh, states in the region so, so it can be uh, more readily uh, 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 more readily received uh, from uh, uh, from Brussels. Uh, Ambassador Constantinescu was saying yesterday uh, that uh, there still is a huge difference between how Western Europeans and how Central and Eastern Europeans view energy. And the view from this part of Europe is critically important uh, from an energy security standpoint. And I totally agree with Ambassador Constantinescu when he basically said that uh, <coughs> energy security is national security. And that when you <coughs> look at Black Sea security, uh, for example, yes, NATO uh, will be doing a lot of things uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, military assets uh, to counter any threats and the Black Sea, but the most, but I, I, I think the uh, possibility or probability of any kind of military engagement in this region is still, thank, thankfully, I think is very, very small. But at the same time, countries in this region can be subject to a lot of huge amounts of economic and political pressure because of a single country uh, uh, using using energy as a game. And if countries are energy secure, that makes that impossible. And that will make the countries in this region and in all of Europe uh, much stronger, both economically and politically. And I think it's absolutely necessary uh, that Romania use its many resources to help uh, create uh, regional uh, energy security as well as European energy. Total agreement on that uh, ambassador. Uh, <clears throat> I think Romania, from having listened now uh, 
two or three times uh, to Minister <laughs> Rigorescu. Uh, I, I think that Romania uh, seems to be taking with its strategy, similarly to uh, the European Union, uh, somewhat of an all of the above approach. Uh, and I think that the emphasis on interconnectivity and technology uh, is exactly right. Uh, already, uh, uh, Romania uh, is pushing hard uh, for the rural pipeline, uh, for interconnection between Bulgaria and Romania, uh, which is being funded uh, in part uh, by the European Union. I think something to the, I think something like 190 million euros uh, that have been committed, uh, been committed by Brussels. I think again that is a result of countries acting together uh, within uh, um, within Brussels. Uh, that uh, pipeline can tie in to uh, the Greece-Bulgaria interconnector, which I think will happen uh, and will allow for more natural gas uh, to come, uh, and LNG uh, to, come, uh, to come into this region. Uh, there's also, in fact, the Atlantic Council published a north-south connection, or, or a north-south paper, and then the north-south connection is a very important starting uh, <coughs> in Poland with LNG terminals in Poland and Lithuania, uh, and uh, also hopefully a Kirk terminal uh, in Croatia, which I know has been talked about for years, and maybe will maybe will come finally uh, come to uh, uh, fruition. I think one of the things that I had not known about until last week, when the Prime Minister and Minister Budrescu were in Washington, uh, and really important, to, uh, is that. Romania, through its interconnections, is now sending gas to Moldova. And, you know, we're not talking about a lot of gas, but on the other hand, Moldova was totally isolated, totally dependent uh, on Russia for its gas supply. And given the strong fraternal relationship between uh, <coughs> Romania and Moldova, I think the fact that gas can go from, um, uh, from west to east into Moldova is, is, is really important, and I think Romania uh, deserves a lot of uh, a lot of credit for that. Uh, briefly on the technology aspects, <coughs> some of which has already been mentioned, uh, and I know the minister has talked about this. <coughs> Clean coal technology really is important. Uh, if countries are ever going to meet their uh, emissions commitments, coal is going to have to be as clean or cleaner than gas. And there are technologies that can allow, uh, that, can allow that to happen. And that it's something I hope that Romania and other countries in the region will look closely at. Another area that I know that is important uh, to the minister is working on existing oil and gas facilities within Romania to enhance those facilities uh, I think you'll find that it's quite remarkable how much, with some technological improvements, that, that how much enhancement there can be made with respect to an existing uh, oil and gas. This is something <coughs> we've pushed very, very hard uh, in connection uh, with Ukraine, and I think in Romania and other countries this can, this can also be important. Uh, new, new nuclear technologies. We're, we're working hard, the Department of Energy, and um, small module nuclear reactors, other countries are working on that. That's something that I think that it's important to work with Romania with. And I know also you talked about smart grids and renewables, and obviously that's very important as well. And I'm glad to see Mr. Hopperlet here because uh, <clears throat> I think that the regulatory aspects with respect to um, uh, the development of renewables with respect to smart grids is going to be uh, exceedingly important. It, 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 the whole concept of distributed generation with respect to uh, solar and wind power, um, it becomes very complicated from a regulatory um, standpoint as to how much, if you have a solar panel uh, on top of your house, uh, how much should you pay for uh, energy that's supplied by the grid because you will need that energy on an intermittent basis uh, until good technology um, and 
until good technologies are really developed with respect to storage. What if you're supplying energy back to the grid? How are you compensated for that? These are very complicated issues that are being worked through in the United States, worked through in other countries in Europe, will be important to um, countries around the world. And uh, uh, it, 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 it is, I think, an area where we could cooperate with Romania on best practices. It's, uh, it's also uh, important, uh, the exploration that's taking place offshore uh, is uh, obviously very important, and uh, we hope that that uh, we hope that that will work out, and that that will again give the opportunity for Romania to be uh, uh, to work on a regional basis, and hopefully to be a gas exporter uh, to uh, countries uh, to countries in the region. There are issues. I don't profess to be an expert on them, but I know that these issues need to be worked out through consultation between the companies and uh, the government issues with respect to uh, tax stability clauses, issues relating to, uh, to, ta to taxes, on, <coughs> uh, taxes on production of resources, which um, hopefully can be worked out so that there can be a disincentive to investment, uh, given uh, the energy, given the state of energy markets right now, investments are tough for companies, and uh, it's important that there not be obstacles to those, uh, to their investment decisions. Also, land use questions also need to be worked out, but, uh, uh, but I think that they can. Uh, just briefly, very briefly, uh, with respect to uh, Europe as a whole, uh, I do think uh, the EU is uh, doing a reasonably good job, you know, the glass being half full anyway. Uh, if we're cynical, we would say it's half empty, uh, but, uh, but for the purposes of this, this discussion, say it's half full. Um, but uh, a real uh, uh, effort to develop uh, the, European, uh, the European Energy Union to develop interconnections and Certainly, the, what will be coming to Romania is an important, uh, an important part of that. But it's important that there be west to east and north to south interconnections uh, all over Europe. And that uh, uh, one of the uh, interconnections that's been talked about forever and hopefully will be finalized within Western Europe is Spain to France, which will allow uh, LNG uh, to come into ports, in fact, it's already a U.S. LNG shipment that has gone to, I think, Portugal, and with proper interconnections can go from there on into, uh, into uh, Central, uh, Central Europe uh, and beyond. Uh, also, uh, the, uh, Europe has done a good job, I think, in developing reverse flows of energy to uh, Ukraine. And, uh, and also searching for various alternative sources of gas. Uh, one source may be the Black Sea, but Ambassador uh, Constantinescu mentioned the Southern Carter coming from Azerbaijan. That could be ultimately, uh, I don't know whether it would be during my lifetime, but gas from Turkmenistan. Uh, there could be gas from the Kurdish areas of Iraq, the eastern Mediterranean, uh, North Africa, and so on. And of course, LNG from uh, different parts of the world, but including, including the United States. And some people say, well, can LNG be competitive from the United States? I think it can, but the main thing is it will be available. Because if it's available, it will, make, it will keep prices down from a competition standpoint uh, in Europe. If uh, uh, our friends at Gazprom know that uh, LNG uh, is available from other sources at low prices, it's going to have to keep up. Uh, is going to have to keep those prices down. And the final thing I'll say is that I think that it is really important for countries like Romania and its neighbors uh, in, the Central, in the Central and Eastern Europe and in the Baltics that they really push Brussels to fully comply with the EU's own laws and regulations. That is so important whether it be the third energy package, 
uh, or competition laws. Uh, it's really critical that the EU stick to its guns. Uh, that's why South Stream didn't happen, uh, in my view. Yeah, there are economic reasons, but Gazprom knew that it was not going to get approval uh, under the third energy package, and finally, um, and, 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 and finally uh, uh, gave up. We'll see what happens with respect to Nord Stream 2, which I think would be a big mistake for Europe for a whole lot of reasons. Um, and uh, certainly on the pull up there, commercial reasons, legal reasons, but from the political side, you know, should Gazprom be rewarded um, another pipeline in the Baltic that's going to directly interfere with Ukrainian transit, possibly affect uh, supplies uh, to Central and Eastern Europe, um, have a negative effect on the EU's LNG policy, divide Europe between Western countries and Eastern uh, and in effect, you know, I, the bottom line for me is, does Europe really want to do this after what Russia's done in Crimea, Eastern Ukraine? Uh, what kind of a, you know, what kind of a signal, uh, what kind of a signal does that send? And this is, a, you know, some say, well, it's just a commercial project. Well, it, it's a lot more than it is a commercial project, but there are clearly um, very, clearly political ramifications. And let me just say the last point that I'll make is that it's not a zero-sum game in Russia. Russia is going to continue to be a major supplier to Europe. And that's, that's a given. But Russia needs to get from um, and hopefully other companies in Russia that might start exporting to Europe ultimately, like Mobitech, for example, um, that comply with European laws and regulations. And if they do, then Gazprom should be able to compete like any other, you know, like any other competitor. Uh, and there's no reason why they shouldn't. So um, I think that uh, I, I thought maybe already a little too long. We still have about 20 or 25 minutes for questions, but uh, uh, those are my thoughts.